I've been using the S22 Plus for about two weeks now, and the experience has been mostly great. There are definitely people that this phone is for, and people that I don't think would benefit from buying it. So let's discuss in this video. I feel like the standard thing to do in a tech review is to take the phone and compare it to last year's phone. But I feel like that misses the obvious point that in late stage tech, Updates are extremely iterative, meaning the difference from last year to this year is not gonna be super significant. The much more significant difference is from two or three years ago to now, because last year to this year is a little bit more of a mixed bag. The build is definitely different. I think it's cleaner, although I bet that some people will miss the more fun two-tone look of the S21, but the glass on the S22 is stronger, Gorilla Glass Victus, and it now has eSIM support as well. And the display is also still flat, which is nice because if you get the Ultra, the display is curved. I think that the biggest hardware differences from last year to this year come in the form of the camera updates. So throughout this video, I'm also going to be showing you three main camera updates you should know about so we can criticize and critique them and see how the camera performs in real life. And the first one is something called texture binning. So texture binning is very similar to Nona binning from years past, but instead of combining the pixels in a nine by one ratio, it does four pixels in a two by two array. So the objective there is to get a little bit more of a middle ground where you're still getting some of the high resolution with also the better dynamic range from pixel binning. And that's the goal and it should be better than Nona binning, but honestly, I have not noticed that huge of an upgrade or that big of a difference from years past. I think generally though, the binned images are still my preference to the full res in almost all lighting conditions aside from like the perfect lighting conditions because having larger pixels definitely does lend itself to better dynamic range. So this phone came out and the conversation about the display was filled with a lot of speculation like what's the lowest refresh rate? Is it LTPO? What's going on? And Samsung has come out saying that the lowest refresh rate is 48 Hertz. So that's where the range begins. Whereas on the ultra it's 10 Hertz. So that is a little bit of a worse display and the display is only full HD versus a quad HD on the S22 ultra. So obviously if you want the best of the best display, you have to get the ultra, but I would say that the display in here is really solid. It's bright and it's colorful. And I feel like Samsung really leads the pack in smartphone displays. Like every one of their phones that I've tested in recent years has a killer display. The vibration motor is definitely not leading the pack though. I'm coming from a Pixel and an iPhone, which have these really tight and specific vibration motors. And in comparison, this motor feels a lot looser and a lot weaker. And so throughout the week, I've actually been missing a lot of notifications. I feel like if you're coming from a phone that doesn't have a great vibration motor, you're not gonna really notice this or be devastated by it. But I test out so many phones throughout the year and I have been throughout the last seven years that I definitely can notice like any small difference. And so it's worth noting that the S22 Plus has a worse vibration motor than I've experienced on other phones or even on the S22 Ultra. The phone runs One UI and it actually has some pretty big updates this year. So the messaging app is now a modified version of Google Messages, meaning that RCS is built in, which is great. And Samsung's actually promising four years of big software updates for the phone, which is also great. I still prefer the aesthetics of stock Android, but unfortunately the Pixel has kind of been plagued with these weird bugs and software issues. Like a lot of people are not having the best experience. And so that actually makes it hard to kind of recommend that phone if it's not gonna be reliable for everyone, which puts Samsung in a unique spot where their software aesthetically is not my favorite, but in terms of reliability, they're kind of going up the ranks because in the last couple of years, they've really improved and their software does feel pretty reliable. On the first day of setting up the phone, the performance was actually kind of bizarre and it made me really nervous because it was laggy and weird. But I think it was just because I was downloading a ton of apps in the background because since then it's been pretty consistently fast. But I will say that there is an intangible slowness about it sometimes where I don't actually think it's slow. Like if I ran a benchmark test, it wouldn't be slow, but it feels slow sometimes, which I think has to do kind of with the animations and the design. But the phone definitely holds up for more intense tasks like gaming or recording AK video, which is actually the second feature that we're gonna test. And while we do that, I'm gonna talk about today's sponsor of the video, Desi, who makes some of my favorite shoes. As you're watching the clip, the three things to pay attention to are the dynamic range, the sound quality because it's quite loud and a little bit windy as you can tell, and then also the stabilization. I feel like that's the main thing to watch for because with AK, that's gonna be kind of key here. And while you watch for that, let me tell you about Vessi because they make some of my favorite shoes on the market for three reasons. First reason is that the shoes are vegan and cruelty free, which to me like actually means a lot. I'm not sure if you guys know that, but I really care a lot about that. And so if you're buying the shoes, you can feel good about that. And the second thing is that the shoes are waterproof, not just water resistant, but waterproof, which means that you can wear them in the winter, which is awesome. You can wear them on a rainy day on a walk, or if you're out on a fall day and it's unpredictable, or maybe it's fall, spring, you can still wear them and you can rest assured that if you walk in a puddle or something happens, the shoes will be fine. And the shoes are also incredibly lightweight and really comfortable, breathable, all the good things. And the insole is actually an antibacterial insole, so you'll keep them fresh. They're kind of like my by-the-door shoes where I can just wear them and I know that I'll be set for the day. They could be your by the 
the door shoes as well. If you go to vessi.com slash nothing but tech and use promo code nothing but tech for $25 off your first order, or you can just hit the link in the description below. So thank you so much, Vessi. And now let's talk about this 8K video sample because a lot of thoughts here. I feel like 8K video is one of those features that is put into the phone for the marketing sheet and not so much for the end consumer experience, but it's actually pretty good. Like I was very impressed. I think that most people will probably use the 4K video mode, which is also great. It really feels like Samsung meaningfully improved the video quality this year. And the photo quality is also great with a couple key caveats. They still have the Samsung processing where the skin tones sometimes feel washed out and sometimes reds get a little oversaturated, but skin smoothing feels less problematic this year. And the shots feel really detailed in so many different types of lighting conditions. I'm actually really genuinely impressed with this phone and the sensor on it. I think that it does a great job taking a lot of great photos. Focus for is definitely still a thing if you get too close to a subject and the updates to portrait mode which were supposed to be like revolutionary for the edge detection are not it's pretty good but it's nothing out of this world incredible to report about and the phone has zoom but not as significant zoom as the s22 ultra which is the third feature we're going to be testing right now The battery life definitely has not been Hall of Fame. I'm actually a little bit nervous about the regular S22 because that has a smaller battery and I've been hearing some mixed things. But for the S22 Plus, it is a manageable battery, B plus, A minus, so nothing horrible, like not a uh, type of battery situation where you're gonna be running to the charger all day, but also not a two day phone. I think that it's a good enough battery considering everything else that you get on the phone. And I just feel like the S22 Plus is like almost the standard recommendation now because the regular S22 is great if you really want a compact phone or you're just trying to save all your money. But the S22 Plus is kind of like the perfect one in the lineup if you want a great experience, but you don't wanna spend over $1,000. The S22 Ultra is this really special, put everything in a type of phone, but I think that that created an opportunity for the S22 Plus just to be the good phone, kind of like the go-to. And I think it's a really good go-to. There's nothing fundamentally incredibly exciting about it, but it hits all of the basics in a really impressive way, and I'm pretty excited about it. Thanks so much for watching this one. I hope you're having an awesome day, and I will catch you in the next video soon. Bye.